Behind every student of the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross, there is a unique personal story. But they all have one thing in common, a great desire to offer a Christian service to many. For this reason, they come to Rome to study near the Pope. Before coming to Rome, I was a professor of philosophy in a university in Washington, D.C. And now I'm studying theology here at the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross. Mojego biskupa dla, dla biskupa kardynała Stanisława Dziwisza je temat... For my bishop, Cardinal Stanislaw Dziwicz, means of communication are very important. He knows the church's situation very well because he was John Paul II's secretary and he knows how to preach using the media. In two months I will be ordained as a deacon and a few months later as a priest. After that it will be what God wishes. Behind every student there are many anonymous benefactors who make it possible for them to study theology, philosophy, canon law or institutional communications in the Eternal City. Jean-Michel Lavoisard and Laura Sabatier are two of the hundreds of benefactors who donate to this university. Each of them has their own reasons for doing so. To face the challenge of the new evangelization so that there are more Catholics, we're lacking priests with good formation and preparation. That's why their philosophical, theological and liturgical formation is important. The world needs faith. That's why priests have to have a solid and well-rounded formation to be able to respond to the needs of different countries. Thanks to financial assistance from people like them, approximately 7,000 students have been through this program, an unusually high number for a young pontifical university. This university was an initiative of Saint Jose Maria, the founder of Opus Dei, who always wanted to build an academic institution in Rome for priests, religious and laypersons, that would give them a solid Roman formation, very much in union with the Pope, and which they would take to their dioceses. The University of the Holy Cross is not just an academic uh, institution where you just want to impart academic knowledge. You want actually to form the mind, you want to form the heart, you want to form these persons who, God willing, in 10 years' time will be leaders or at least forming those who are going to be in their various places of origin. Bishop Anthony Moheria was one of the first students of the Holy Cross. Every year, students from every continent arrive to learn in its classrooms, as he once did. Having a classmate from, you know, from Africa, from, from the States or from Europe and all in, in one classroom studying the same uh, um, material and uh, see, it's very nice and it's, it also encourages me. Despite differences of language or academic goals, everyone comes with the same purpose of study, to receive a good formation in Catholic doctrine and in the teachings of the Church. Every professor here has a doctorate, and they know how to spread the Christian message, a message connected to the church and to everyday life. What we're really interested in is forming people who are generous, committed to serving the church, to serving our Lord, really to serving people who are Nothing less than saints. Every student matures in his or her own personal way. The most fascinating aspect of education is to see how each student grows and matures intellectually and personally. I look back and I'm happy for the time I spent here. We had problems, for example, of uh, control of the central heating system. Some days it would be extremely cold and we have to stay with our overcoats in class. And some days it would be extremely hot because there was no control in the central heating. Thanks to the efforts of hundreds of benefactors, the facilities have improved.
After three years of modernization and maintenance work, the main campus of the university, the Palazzo of Santa Polinare, has become a perfectly restored 18th century building, endowed with 21st century technology. The buildings are like the students. Every once in a while they need to be rebuilt, reinforced and brought to fruition. This is what we've done with this magnificent building that hosts us. I think it's a good way to help us want to improve our studies, our formation, to be in a more elegant and respectable environment. This also helps with our human formation. One student told me, we see the university as our own home. We try to protect it and take care of it, because the facilities here help us. It's very beneficial for us to study in an environment like this. It's a wonderful opportunity. Today, the university can take in more students and give them better formation. Now the available space is much better. Classroom capacity has doubled. An aula magna has been built in honor of John Paul II. An aula minor with 110 seats dedicated to Monsignor Alvaro del Portillo has also been built, as well as another large room dedicated to the founder of Help the Church in Need, the Verenfried van Straten room. The atmosphere is very conducive for, for study. The rooms are, it's just good sitting there. I, I am very happy to see how much effort has been put to improve uh, from where we were before. To receive an offer of admission, priests and seminarians must reside in an ecclesiastical college or a priestly residence. The university places many of them in the Sedes Sapientiae International College and in the Tiberino priestly residence. But they receive twice the number of applications. Many students have not been able to study here for lack of available housing in the Eternal City. For this reason, the university hopes to build a new residence. We don't just eat, sleep and go to the university in the residence. It's a place where we pray together, where we celebrate the Eucharist together, where we coexist, have fun and make real friendships. It's a challenge to continue to find funding for scholarships for our students, um, especially those who are who are really those who are studying for the priesthood from all over the world, but also for lay people, so that they can also serve the church with their contribution in education and research. Helping out financially awakens a sense of solidarity among priests, future priests, and lay persons like us. Many things depend on the benefactors, and for this we are very grateful. We also thank the Lord, who has encouraged this charity, this great heart for giving. The benefactors play an essential, fundamental and irreplaceable role. We're very grateful for what they've done and for what they continue to do. Their sacrifice has made this building possible and for thousands of seminarians and priests to be formed here and for thousands of Christians to bring back to their countries their Roman experience, their unity with the Holy Father and their profound sense of Catholicism developed here. I give thanks to all who helped this university and pray that it may grow and contribute to the well-being of the Church and all of humanity.